How's this for a backdrop for all you Mopar 11 member janders? Um, perp guard, still the perp guard part. That fender back there, as has been mentioned, that's a 68 Barracuda fender. Nobody really asked about it, but it's here because I did a bunch of repairs and a little bit of rust work to it. I don't even know, two, three years ago, I guess. And uh, the guy's just got a lot of shit. He's got a pair of them fenders. And he dropped it. And I think he did more damage to it now than I, he did when I fixed it the first time. So it's just patiently waiting for me to fix it. Let's, uh, let's go have a look at some stuff what I've done. Oh, there's fat cakes. Hey, you've already seen that. So I painted the inside of the, the, uh, the hood and the trunk lid there yesterday. Don't mind the shop. I mean, this is kind of real world stuff here. You know what I mean? There isn't a maid here. So that's how I paint the inside of a hood when I paint the inside of a hood when I gotta paint the inside of the hood on the inside. You know what I mean? Um, doing it like this, it keeps the... It's inevitable. You're gonna have shit blow out of all the brace work and stuff when you just can't, when you try to blow it and vacuum it, you just blow it here, then you blow it there, then you blow it there, then you blow it there. You never get it all out of there. So at least this way, I stand it up like that, and then, uh, wow, the camera's just in and out, and in and out, and in and out, hey? In and out, yeah. Woo, woo, woo. See what I'm saying? Um, so yeah, I blow it and vacuum and stuff, and then I stand it up like that. I smack it on the outside, you know, to get some vibration, knock some of the shit loose that's still in there. Then I give it one more blow, and theoretically, the stuff should, as it comes out, it should go down. So, uh, yeah, and then uh, when I'm painting, when I'm blowing, hopefully it goes down and it doesn't come up into the paint. So, uh, it looks almost black, hey? It's purple, take my word for it. But yeah, see, it's kind of shiny and kind of purpley. And then, uh, same kind of a deal with the trunk lid. Kind of try to get it so stuff's... And actually, this trunk lid is worse than the, mo the majority of the ones that I've done because this is the only trunk lid that I've done that the inner brace work has got these holes in it. Every other trunk lid that I've done, and I've done a couple, has just been a solid, um, a solid panel on the inside of it. And this one's got those holes for shit to shoot right up while you're painting it. Just like that. Watch out! Just like that. And we don't like that. That's not what we're talking about. See, I've done that. There's a couple of bits in it here and there, but... All in all, it's pretty good. You can see some dimples from me having to work it a bit. I don't really get the, the dealio with these Dodge panels and how the uh, inner brace work on these things is, it's so weak that when you're working them, because I don't, also don't get why Dodge hoods are such a piece of shit. Every damn Dodge hood that I've worked on the inside of the hood, no matter how nice the car or the outside of the hood is, the inside of the hood is just rusted beyond belief. Always, 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 always. And it's not always just where the hood insulator sits. I mean, they rust along that top edge up, like they rust everywhere. They just rust. How come? Anybody? They're rusty. I don't like it. You can't sandblast the rust out of it because when you sandblast it, it warps that inner framework, I know, I've done it, and then that pulls the sheet metal on the outside of the hood around. And then you gotta cut all the little pucks of sealer, and Dodge guys like those original pucks of sealer. I don't know, it's a bummer. Just, just about bums me right over. Not completely over, but it's a pretty big bummer. Mm, sketchy, firebird bed. You're gonna lose that bed pretty soon, so I gotta start working on this thing here in the next couple of weeks anyways, I'm back on this thing. Once I get rid of this damn Dodge. Damn Dodge. So here's a, here's a, for all the, woo, Dodge guys in the audience. Um, so I've done, I don't know how many darts I've done. 
I've been doing this since 2005, so that's what, just what, 19 years now, 18, yeah, 19 years now. And uh, I think while I was working the other day, I was giving it a quick thought, and I think I've done probably 12 or 13 just darts. I've done a couple of dusters, a uh, charger, a couple of cook, a lot of dodges I've done. Um, one, one customer in particular, in, uh, in, in the time that I've been in business, I think I have done for him, I have done 13 or 14 cars. Not all to this extent, but there's probably been five or six cars I've done for him that have been rotisserie restorations. Uh, one of the interesting cars that I've done for him, and again, this is for the Dodge guys in the audience, is a documented, Canadian documented, one of one 71 Dodge Dart. I kind of like it just because of, of the fact of what it is. So apparently the story that he told me, and he's got the paperwork for it, is that there was a Dodge dealer in Edmonton, Alberta, in Canada here, that in 71 you could not get a 340 and a standard transmission in a Dart any longer. 318s, that was it. Um, they bumped the 340s up into dusters and whatnot. So uh, 60, 60 cars, I think, was a minimum, he said, that had to be pre-ordered in order to get a Dart with a 340, and then the factory could order standard transmissions in them as well. So this Dodge dealership, I believe, not positive, so I'm not saying for a fact it was Derek Dodge, but I think it was Derek Dodge in Edmonton ordered 65 cars pre-ordered. Um, of those 65 cars, five of them were standard transmission cars. Four of those standard transmission cars were three-speed standards. One car was a four-speed standard car. Uh, it's a white car with a black interior. And this fella has it, and I've done a rotisserie restoration on the car, and it is a numbers car with the 340 and the four speed. And apparently he has the documentation to say that that's the only car produced, the only 71 Dodge Dart, I believe it's a Swinger, produced with a factory 340 and a four year car. He has the car and it's a, a restored, running, driving. I think this is past summer in 2023, he drove it for the first time. Uh, dog dish hubcaps, the whole bit. Really, really cool looking car, uh, black bumblebee stripe, everything just the way that it's supposed to be. Cardboard headliner. And um, when I did the car, I had to put a new roof skin on the car because the cardboard headliner rotted the roof from the inside out. You laid in that car and you looked up and it was just like the night sky with the stars. So it was a big job. But I guess, you know, the, the one of one factor, I'm sure there's probably people out there of the 19 people that watch me saying, yeah, bullshit, they didn't make you the bullshit. Well, you know, it's, it's, you can believe what you want, but the fellow that's got it, I believe him and he's got the paperwork to back it up. So you don't work on very many one-on-one cars. I did another car that was wicked rare um, for another fellow that was a Cougar. Um, and it was, it, it is a 429 Super Cobra Jet drag pack cobra or uh, cougar uh, green with a black leather interior and the top loader four speed and four nine inch rear end with factory 390 gears in it i believe uh, but yeah another ridiculously rare car and uh, when it was done the guy that owned it he's not a ford guy but uh, he thought the car was cool and he sold it to somebody else for a set amount of money and that dude immediately Piped the thing down into the States from Canada here, ran it through the auction, and the thing sold for $230,000, $240,000 just because it was documented for what it was. Craig Jackson actually even did a, a little spiel on the car, anyways, for the auction. Um, did I get a portion of that money? No, I certainly did not. But, uh, anyways, um, what, what, we're, what we're cooking on today is uh, the reason I, 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 I switched the order of what I was going to do uh, because I really want to get rid of this damn car. Like this thing is going to be well over 400 hours by the time it's done. And 
It hasn't been 400 consecutive hours because I got some other shit I got to work through too. And I get tired of looking at this shit all the time. It's every day, you know, and you get after a while, it starts to affect your sensibilities. And I, my sensibilities are kind of shaky to start with. So, so the reason I done that was uh, I want to be able to let the clear on the inside of those panels sit for a couple of days. Well, at least a good solid day um, to harden up more. So when I flip them over onto a stand to finish prepping the outside of the panels, I don't, I don't screw up the paint on the inside. I don't want to mark it all up. I mean, it doesn't look too bad in there. So why would I, why, why would I take what I done and, and, and undo it? So I did them yesterday so that they can sit. Um, and today, the intent today, well, it's not just the intent, but I'm going to paint this mess of shit over here today and probably prime those. Focus, come on, focus, you dirty prick. Oh, you're not going to focus, are you? Ooh, there it goes. Does that make you dizzy? I don't really like it. So, but anyways, yeah, that's, that's the gig for today is uh, trying to get that shit out of the booth and put this shit in the booth. Um, I'm probably not going to paint this shit right away this morning because it's still bloody cold outside. So I'm going to let it warm up outside a little bit before I paint it. Because I bring air from outside inside to replace the air in the booth. So I got to heat that air up. So I'm going to let the air outside warm up for a few hours before I start warming it up myself. So there, that's the, the natter and on start of the video. That's <laughs> oh, okay. <coughs> Guess what time it is? Fall 30. I don't know what song that is. I'm not going to sing it anymore. I'm going to paint some stuff here. Once again, it is time to do some painting all up in this bitch, as I'd like to say. I don't know why I'd like to say that, but I do. So there it is. Everybody's blown off, wiped down. And uh, gonna blow it, tag it, put a coat of uh, sealer on it. Insides of the fenders are masked so we don't get any purple all over the lovely, lovely black shit. I'm doing the doors. Generally, I would have some of this masked up, but uh, in anti-dodge fashion, this feller wants, he's going to do the metal on the interior, the same purple as the car, with uh, white upholstery. I don't know, whatever. It's not my car. I don't care. I don't really like the purple to start with. So, But anyways, there we are. We are set up. We are uh, ready to get jiggy with it. So... Uh, I'm gonna start getting jiggy with it. I'll bring you in here and there and show you some stuff, some things and stuff and whatnot. Uh, brief interlude. When I got something painted, I like to keep a car cover on it when it's out in the shop. See how tight that car cover's pulled? You wanna know why? Fatty Cake thinks it's a hammock. <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah, you gotta get your fatty cakes out of there. Come here. Oh, I gotta put you guys down. Ah, uh, that's pretty funny though. I'm sure she wasn't expecting when she jumped up onto that silver shelf for it to turn into a hammock. And that's a good reason for a car cover. Oh, are you coming out of there? Get your fatty cakes out of there, would you? You guys are killing me. Thought I'd bring you in and show you something while I'm doing it here. You want a nice surface. And I'm sure you do. Um, tack in between your coats. So I got a one coat of sealer on here and I got one coat of base. That's a little piece of 600 grit sided paper. I wear really light gloves when I paint. And the reason I do that is so that when I'm tacking the surface, I can feel through the glove because the glove's really thick. So as I'm tacking the surface, as you get a little speck of dust that might be in your paint, you'll feel it through the tack rag and through the glove, like I got a little one right there. So it'll get down in the light and find this little microscopic little son of a bitch. Where are you, you little bastard? Keep 
feeling it, keep feeling it. Oh, it's right there somewhere. Oh, there it is. And just a couple of strokes with that, and knocks the top off that little piece of dirt. How about more with a pedal with a tag rag? And I'll do it to all the little bits that I find. It takes a minute. But again, if you want it to be nice, it's a hell of a lot faster to do this now than it's going to be if you're going to need to polish the bits of dust out of the clear. You know what I'm saying? It's a lot faster to polish the clear. Actually, that's pretty good. There's not much in there. Um, the vendor. But anyways, if you use fine enough paper, like I said, I use 600. Because in my next coat of base, um, in my next coat of base, it'll kill that. It'll fill the 600 and it'll be gone. I don't know if you'll be able to see this in the right the light. But there's a few spots. There's a spot there. You can see that little scuff. There's another guy. Can I get it for you? Right there. You see that one. Up there, you see one. There's a couple on that are a couple on that fender. So like I say, tack rag. Light glove, sweaty hand. Then like I say, oh, hell, sorry. You can feel your tack rag snag on the little bit of shit that's in there. It's gone. Next coat of base, it's out of there. Generally, I find that uh, the majority of the time, You'll just get that shit usually in your first coat. Because that's your first pass with the gun, and it'll probably be in your sealer. If you can see it, these little bits that I got, they're little gray tits. Just little tiny tits. And nobody likes tiny little tits. Well, I shouldn't say that. But that's what they are, and when I'm knocked top off, I'm this little white dog. Gray dog, whatever. Like I said, next coat of base, that'll be gone. So uh, I'm ready for my next coat of base, so you're going to be gone. Never gets old, does it? Blink. <laughs> so here's the thing. So I have uh, three coats per bowl on these panels. Now I said uh, previously that uh, when I got the paint, I had to get more paint mixed up. And when they mixed me up the more paint, they were missing one of the toners. They ran short on one of the toners. And it happened to be a green curl in the purple. So uh, those of you who are Dodge diehards are probably right now saying, well, what the hell is there doing with the green purple, green curl and the purple from the 1970 when they didn't even have pearls back in 1970? Well, it's because this is the 2007 to 2014 or whatever the hell it is. And it's got pearls in it. So I've already sprayed the body of the car, and I can see that in sunlight, the body of the car has quite a red flip to it. When you get it in a certain light, it's got like a, it's getting like, like, it's, it's like a red glow to it if you don't know what a flip is. So me and my little peanut says that uh, that green pearl is probably in there to help control that red flip. And they're getting that red flip from a combination of the other shit in the colors. Whatever, that's a chemistry lesson that you don't really give a shit about. So being as how I don't run myself <coughs> flat out of materials when I'm doing a job until I get right to the end, and I've always got a little bit left, I still had a little under quart of my original purple that's on the body of the car. So what I'm going to do now is these panels have three coats of the wrong color, which actually, you know, I took a stick, I took a stick with some paint on it, so it's all wet and shiny. Out there, when the sun was coming in the window, just right and hitting the big purple turkey out there, and uh, I held it up alongside the big purple turkey, I couldn't see a difference. So, and then the dude said there wasn't much green pearl in the color to start with. But anyways, what I'm going to do to make sure that we don't have an issue is I'm going to take the original color and I'm going to blend some in on the back edges of the doors because they're buttoned up against the core peel. So I'm going to blend the right color in and blend it up through the doors. Um, the cowl panel is this color. So on the fender tops, I'm going to blow just a little bit of the purple right, right at the edge of the fender just so that there's not a night and day seam just in case it does show a little 
And then uh, when I do the hood and the trunk lid, well, the entire trunk lid is going to have to be this original color, which I have enough left to do the top of the trunk lid. But the hood, I'm going to have to blend in the very back edge of the hood <coughs> with the old color over top of the new color. But I can't blend it in so far as to affect the scoops because they're going to be the new color and not the old. So this is just one of those days where uh, you do what you got to do. So I'm doing what I got to do. get foggy you gotta get out of here oh there you have it purple shiny I guess that's it. That's about all I got to say. Here, we'll give you a shot of the reflection on the doors. They're pretty straight. What do you think? That's pretty straight, eh? All right, well, that's it. That's all I got for today. So just remember, if it's nice out, leave it out. <laughs>